We're in section 8.2, and this is the third you try it from that section. I am on page 212 in the textbook. And it says, open the file, conditional three. So I've done that. And in this file, you're asked to prove without premises, so that's different, the law of contraposition. And here it is right here. Okay, and um, a couple things that are gonna be different about this. One, it's gonna take a little longer um, with more steps, but let's see if we can kind of talk through what they're going for in this. So remember, we're looking at a biconditional here. And a biconditional, just remember, it's two conditionals. It's a conditional going this way, and then it's a conditional going back the other way as well. And in this case, that would mean it's if, if P then Q, then, if not Q, then not P, that's going this way. And then it also goes the other way as well. So it would be, if I could move this over here, and put this over here, it would say, if, if not Q, then not P, then if P, then Q. So if this, then that, and if this, then that. That's what a biconditional is. Okay, so now that we have that idea, it says start your proof by sketching in the two subproofs that you know you'll have to prove plus the desired conclusion. Here's the desired conclusion. And like I just said, uh, we are gonna want to do two subproofs. So one is gonna be if P then Q, then not Q, if not Q, then not P, right? So that's this going this way. And then our second subproof is gonna be if not Q, then not P, it's right here, then if P, then Q, right here. So if this, then that, if this, then that. You see it right here, if this, then that, if this, then that. Okay, and then there's a desired conclusion right there. So let's go ahead and fill that in. We're gonna do, remember, first thing, so we don't have a premise here, because this is just saying, if this, then that, and if this, then that, then that. That's what this means. So we go up here. Uh, we're going to say proof, new subproof, and that's going to be P conditional Q. All right, and then we're going to add the next step, and that's going to be not Q conditional not P. So if P then Q, then if not Q, then not P. And then we're gonna end the subproof. Remember that, that's important. So end this subproof. All right, and we're not done. We have to do it the other way too. So we're gonna do proof and new subproof. So this is gonna go the other way. This is gonna go if this, then that. So we go not Q, then not P, right? And then adding a step. We say, if P, then Q. So we've done it this way, if this and that, and we've done it the other way, if that, then this. Okay, and now we want to also end this subproof. So we end that, and here's our desired conclusion down there. We should get this at the end. I'm just gonna paste that there. This is what we're going for. Now, just a point, when you're looking at the textbook here, it rightly does not number this, because this is no premise right here, this is your first one right here, but look, in Fitch, it doesn't do the same thing, all right, it just automatically numbers the first one. So we're gonna have a little bit of uh, a different numbering system from here and here. I'm not exactly sure if there's a way to fix that, but let's just note it here, and we'll keep that in mind. All right, so we've done first step, second step, of this you try it. Now let's go down to third. It says now you have the overall structure, start filling in the first subproof. Since the goal of that proof so, since the goal of that subproof is a conditional claim, sketch in a conditional proof that would give you that claim. So it's just the same idea. We're just doing a few subproofs here. Alright, so we have uh, let's see if P then Q, right? So what we're going to do is we want to do this subproof right here. See this over here? If not Q, then not P, right? If not Q, then not P. So we're going to do another subproof. Proof, new subproof. It's a subproof within a subproof. Okay. 
we're going to do if not q and then add a step and we're going to say not p all right that's what it's telling you so we have the structure laid out now it says step four to derive not p in the sub proof sorry sub sub proof that's right you will need to assume p and derive a contradiction this is pretty straightforward so let's see we're going here again so this is not q and we want to do another sub proof so it's sub sub proof sub 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 proof i think at this point so proof new sub proof we want to assume p all right because and this is this is the reason down here negation introduction all right if we can assume p and get a contradiction then we know the opposite of that is the case so if we assume p all right and then let's add a step we get q from this conditional up here if p then q we've assumed p if p then q right and we just do the rule as conditional elimination right if p then q there it is well we have p then we get q let's first check out the steps if we're right yep that's the way to do it all right so again the numbers are going to look different this is two and four this is one and three over here but you get the idea so we're going to follow the concept and not be a slave to the numbers okay all right, so we got Q, but then look, we get a contradiction because we have not Q up here. Remember, this is outside the subproof, so that's okay. If it was uh, down the line in another subproof, that would not be okay. Um, all right, so we have that, and our next step is we get a contradiction. See that? So we introduce a contradiction, and we want to cite the rule, right, as this. And we just look up and see where our contradictions are. It's not Q and Q, and there's our rule. And let's see if that checks out, right? It does. So we go down here to not P. Remember, all we did is if we can assume this and get a contradiction, we get the negation of that, not P. All right, so let's see. We cite negation introduction. There it is. And there it is, and let's check out our step. There it is, that checks out. Good, and now we said, remember through all these conditionals, it's if not Q, then through this subproof, we get not P, all right? So then down here, we have if not Q, then not P. And we want to say, we want to cite the rule first, right? It is, Go down here, and it is conditional introduction. There it is. What well, introduction? Conditional there. And we just said not Q, then not P. Cite it. There it goes. Checks out. Okay. So we've done that. It says this completes the first subproof. Luckily, you sketched in the second subproof, so you know what to do next. What you want to do next. You should be able to finish the second subproof on your own since it is almost identical to the first. So let's see if we can do that. All right, now we're at the second subproof and it basically is the same formula as the last one, right? So let's, uh, we want, here's our goal, right? Or kind of our sub goal down here, if P then Q, right? So let's start another subproof, new subproof, if P, and then let's go ahead and say then Q, right? That's the goal. And we don't have it yet, so we need to do something, all right? If P, then Q. So if we, know, if we want Q, let's try negation introduction again through another subproof. New subproof. Let's assume not Q and see what we get. All right, if we get not Q and add another step, what do we get? We get not P, all right, not P. And how do we do that? What's the rule? Well, it is, again, conditional elimination, all right? Because we just said, if not Q, 
then P right there. And we have not Q, so we get not P. Let's check the step. Yep, checks out. Now, why do we want that? Because that is going to give us, just like before, a contradiction. And where is it? P up here and not P. There it is. So we've introduced contradiction. Contradiction introduction, right? And here's the rule. Cite that. Let's see if it checks out. Come on, let's see if it checks out. Where are you? Yep, it does. Good. Okay. Now we can go down here. We got Q, right? So it says if we have uh, if we have uh, like that, like that, then we have that. So we have Q from assuming not Q, right? Here's what we assumed: contradiction Q. All right. Remember the rule is negation introduction. All right. So we did that, and we just did that right there. Cite that. We, got, we assumed that and we got that. So let's see if that checks out. It does. Good. Now we go down here. We just have a couple rules to cite. That's all. If P then Q. That's pretty easy because we did if P then Q. Right? So we'll just say conditional introduction. Remember because we're introducing a conditional. It's easy to remember. So if P then Q. There it is. And let's check the step. We got it. Now, down here, this is our last step. And this is what's going to be different from before. All right, this is going to be the new rule that we've introduced in the textbook. So this is going to be, go down to this last step. This is the goal. And this is going to be biconditional introduction. And we've just laid it out. So, oh, we didn't cite. That's why. So let's see, we need to cite this and that. And now let's see if it checks out. Yep. Okay, remember you don't cite this. Uh, that's just the if, basically. So through all that, and then through all that, we get that. Let's see if the goal checks out, and it does. So through all those complicated processes, remember that you just need to look out for your conditionals, what you're assuming and have some strategies in mind for going through these conditionals and going one by one, proving them, and then getting back to the goal. And that's the biconditional introduction rule.